CBS News. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is CBS News Radio with Kennedy Space Center. How do you hear me? Is this Bill? I've, I've got you loud and clear. Well, actually, it's Peter King, but Bill Harwood is with me, and uh, we both have questions for you this morning. Dan, first of all, good morning and happy Thanksgiving. The holiday tomorrow, we're wondering how you'll celebrate, what you'll eat, and do you even have time to enjoy a holiday this early in your mission? Peter, good morning to you, too. Um, Yes, yeah, tomorrow it's going to be uh, a day off for us. It'll be a holiday, and we'll get a chance to celebrate uh, with uh, with our our families, at least remotely, from space station. Um, for myself, uh, I, I've got some turkey, um, some cranberry dressing, stuffing, um, all of the standard traditional uh, fare for a Thanksgiving meal already lined up and ready to go. And we've got enough for Anton and Anatoly and I, all three, to share. The three of you have really had kind of a rush 10 days, really hitting the ground running. How's the early going been, and what's at the top of your to-do list right now? Well, it, it actually has been, been really busy. It's, it's been busy for the two months actually leading up the to launch, too, Peter. Um, we, um, we had a whirlwind of a handover with uh, Mike, Sergey, and Satoshi before we... Uh, saw them off uh, on their way back home uh, yesterday. Um, we basically, as quickly as possible, tried to learn our way around the space station from a system standpoint, payloads and all the rest. And uh, we've hardly even had a chance to unpack our things and get settled into our crew quarters. So I guess for us right now, for tomorrow, for the holiday, that's probably pretty high on the list of priorities is just complete the, the moving in process, if you will. Hey, Dan, it's Bill Harwood. Uh, we were all... Uh mightily impressed to watch you take off in what looked like a blizzard the other day. Uh, that's quite a quite an all-weather machine the Russians have. What was launch like? How was, uh, from a shuttle guy's perspective, what was it like riding uphill on a Soyuz? Yeah, no, great question, Bill. Uh, to me, actually, the sensations of the ride uphill were, were pretty much the same. I, I think the acceleration profiles uh, very similar to what the shuttle is. Uh, we all have to go to from zero to 17,500 miles an hour in about nine minutes or so, and that's that's pretty much the same. Um, the accommodations are a little bit more uh, cozy, I guess I'd put it. So it's a lot smaller inside, um, but uh, but apart from that, the sensations were were pretty much the same. Getting into the rocket was a little bit different, um, as you mentioned, uh, with the snow, and we also had a lot of of fog that's kind of caused by uh, the super cooled propellant that's in the rocket basically chilling down the air so it was uh, it was basically a, um, a bucket brigade of uh, the very specialists and strap-in crews and in, uh, in Russian uh, uh, space agency management that kind of led us in our uh, in our snowsuits I think you might have seen those as well uh, to the ladder to, to make our way up to the to the elevator and on board and uh, and there was basically two arms length worth of it worth of visibility on the way in. Um, but once you got inside, it was it was just like you trained in the sim, and uh, and actually very neat. Very cool. You know, I know it's a short handover. You guys are still getting your your space legs, I guess. But uh, one question I had looking down the road, I'd I'd seen a reference earlier about uh, main bus switching unit number one having some some difficulties, and and that might be something you end up having to go outside and do something about. What, what what's the status of MBSU one, and and what might be on your plate early next year? Yeah, well, right now MBSU one is still working from the standpoint of passing power from all the uh, from the upstream power source, that being the solar rays, down to the downstream load. So, it's it's doing its job in passing power, but it's not talking to the computers that control it right now. So it's what we call a loss of calm uh, situation right now. But it's functioning and doing all the things it needs to to keep all the loads working. As a precaution, we've got um, a uh, jumper cable that we've installed that will protect us from the MBSU failing outright and potentially losing some critical loads um, inside the space station. We also have another jumper that will protect us from a similar failure causing us to lose some of our external cooling. So that one's in standby, but the jumper to protect all the internal loads, that's in place. Should it actually fail entirely, then that would be a reason to go outside and, uh, and repair it, I think. So, uh, but right now, uh, right now it seems to be doing its job okay. And would you be the one that would go outside? Would it be, uh, I'm assuming it would be you, but I'm, I'm not sure about that, if it happened uh, early next year.
if it lasted, if it, if it worked okay to, through the end of our expedition, then we would probably want to defer that as long as possible and put it on the next planned uh, US EVA, for example, US EVA 18. Um, if it fails uh, between now and the end of our expedition, then likely what we would do is I'd go outside either with um, Andre Kuypers or with Don Pettit, and uh, and the other of the two of them, I, one or the other, the other of the two of them would probably either do arm support from a camera and overall viewing standpoint, or potentially if it was complicated arm uh, operations uh, to the degree that one of one of the two EVA crew members needed to be in a foot restraint mounted on the arm, probably I think Don would uh, be inside flying the arm for that operation. Dan, you've got the daily double of holidays that you'll be missing here on Earth, not just Thanksgiving, but Christmas, and add New Year's to that. How uh, Did I say Don? Dan, excuse me. How tough is it to be uh, be away from your family? And, and I'm wondering if on that last progress that came up, if uh, you've got Christmas packages uh, that are on there waiting for you. No, I sure do, Peter. Actually, I had a Halloween package and a Thanksgiving package, and then I've got, uh, actually, I haven't opened that one yet. I'm not allowed to until tomorrow morning. And there's also a Christmas package. And we actually got some things for all three of us for Christmas, Anton, Anatoly, and I. Um, it's it's always tough being away from your family, and, and that's one aspect of space flight. And it's been that way for a long time. And for crews that do long duration, you're away for a considerable period of time. During the training leading up to launch, the two years or two and a half years, you also spend an awful long time uh, away from family, on the road and so forth. And in a kind of an interesting sense, now that I've got on board Space Station, I actually have a little bit better communication uh, with the family right now. I almost feel like I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm with them to a greater extent than I would be if I was overseas, for example, in Star City or uh, in, in Europe or Japan. And that's because we've got a great capability on board to video conference. So at the very least, a couple of times a week, one time a week for sure, and this week definitely tomorrow as well, I'll have a, a two-way video conference with the family. Um, and then they can watch me to the degree that it's it's not too boring for them. They can watch me almost any time on, uh, on ISS Live or on the NASA, NASA TV website. So um, they're always watching me. I get a chance to see them. I can call them a couple of times a day without almost you know, any problem at all. And, uh, and that's really neat. So they, they feel like they're with me. You know, here at KSC, we're awaiting another launch, the uh, Mars Science Lab and Curiosity rover on Saturday morning. You're going to be home, of course, by the time it lands on Mars. But I'm wondering, what about this upcoming mission excites you? Well, I think all the Mars missions are, are, um, are fantastic. That, in my opinion, is our ultimate goal in the next couple of decades for human spaceflight is to go to Mars. It's the most Earth-like planet in the solar system. It's a planet that uh, many millions, billions of years ago was probably a very similar to Earth and very wet. Um, and it could be, it could very well be that there are, uh, there's evidence of life and potentially even current life albeit in a, in, a, um, in a very simple form, buried in the soil of Mars. So um, as we've gradually gone from, you know, from Viking uh, to the Spirit and Opportunity rovers to now Mars Science Laboratory, we have more and more capability to do actually in situ anal analysis with a, essentially a laboratory that can analyze samples and, and, uh, and potentially, if not give us direct indication that there's life, give us some very strong clues. And it's a, it's a great way to pave the future uh, flights, the future human flights that I think are, are destined to go there. And Dan, as we close out, we did have a request from a Twitter follower who wants to know when you'll start tweeting, and hopefully it'll be soon when things settle down. Have a great Thanksgiving, and uh, from Bill and, Bill and me, Bill and I hope you have a very safe mission, and we look forward to talking to you again. Peter, Bill, it was great to have you on board. Great talking with you, and that's on my list of things to do. When the in all the uh, the hectic time leading up to launch and the time we've had on board so far, I haven't been able to keep up with that, but I will. You you folks take care. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And you too. Thank you again. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. And thank you, CBS News Station. Please stand by while we reconfigure video and audio communications.